Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In today's session, we will be discussing about Harappan Civilization. This Harappan Civilization, it is also known as Indus Valley Civilization. Now let's see the geographical extent of this Harappan Civilization. So this Harappan culture or civilization, it is said to be older than Chalcolithic culture, which we have studied earlier. But this Harappan Civilization, it is more developed than Stone Ages and this Chalcolithic cultures. So this Harappan Civilization, it rised in the north western part of our Indian subcontinent and it is called Harappan. Why? Because this civilization it was discovered first in the year 1921. This was discovered at a modern site of Harappa. The site name itself is Harappa and it was situated in the province of West Punjab. So this West Punjab it is in Pakistan. So since the site name was Harappa, the civilization or its culture name, it also became as Harappan civilization. This Harappan culture, it covered parts of Punjab, Sindh, Baluchistan, Gujarat, Rajasthan and the fringes of western Uttar Pradesh. Harappan culture, it is extended from Jammu in the north and to the Narmada estuary in south and from the west it is extended from Makran coast of Baluchistan and it is extended to Meerut in the northeast. The Harappan area it formed a triangle and it accounted for about 12,99,000 600 square kilometers and this area it is larger than Pakistan and we can say this area it is bigger than ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia also. Harappan civilization it had such a huge area. So none other cultural zone in the third and second millennium BC in this world it was not large as this Harappan zone. It was such a huge in size and almost 250 Harappan sites are known and only 6 of them are regarded as cities and remaining are said to be villages. And among this 6 cities of Harappa, 2 are said to be very important. They are Harappa in Punjab and Mohanjadaro in Sindh. This both it formed the part of Pakistan and it is a distance of 483 kilometers and these two cities these two cities they are linked with river Indus and the third city it is called as Chanhudaru and this is about 130 kilometer south of Mohenjadaru in the sun. And the fourth city is called Lothal and this Lothal it is in Gujarat at the head of Gulf of Cambay. And the fifth city it lays at Kalibangan in northern Rajasthan and the sixth city it is called as Banwali and this is situated in Hisar district in Haryana. In this valley civilization, it saw two cultural phases. One is pre-Harappan and the other is Harappan. So this Harappan, it is similar to Kalibangan city which is in northern Rajasthan. So this Harappan period, they used mud brick platforms. So this platforms it was used for streets as well as for drains also. The Harappan culture, the later Harappa, the later Harappa phase, it is found in 
Rangpur and Rojdi in Katiawar Peninsula in Gujarat. So this was the later Harappan phase, and this was found in Rangpur and Rojdi. So where in Katiawar Peninsula in Gujarat. Town planning and structures. This Harappan culture it was distinguished by a system of town planning. Harappa and Mohenjo-daro each had its own citadel. The citadel it is also called as Acropolis. And this citadel it was occupied by the members of ruling class. So citadel it is said to be a raised platform that is the houses in the citadel they were they were raised to a certain height and the houses below the citadel below that raised platform it is called as lower town so in this lower town there were people and this people were common people and the ruling class people they were said to stay in the citadel so the most remarkable thing about the harappan civilization is the arrangement of houses in the city let's say these are the houses and these houses they followed a grid system the houses are evenly arranged and the roads of this civilization it cuts at right angles at every cross so this is the pattern of harappan civilization houses and the road structures and this city it was divided into so many blocks and the most important public place of mohenjo daro it was a great bath so this was the important place in mohenjo daro and this great bath it comprises a tank and it is situated in a sitadel mount and this great bath at mohenjo daro it is an example of a beautiful brick work in mohenjo daro so this great bath measures 11.88 into 7.01 meters that is the length of the great bath it is 11.88 meters and the breadth is 7.01 meters and the depth of this great bath is 243 meters to the right side of this great bath there were rooms for changing the clothes the floor of the bath it was made out of burnt bricks so water was drawn from a large well in an adjacent room and an outlet outlet was present at one corner of this great bath to drain all this water and to replace a fresh water into it from the other end so there is also believe that this great bath it served as a ritual bathing and most of those religious ceremony it took place in this great bath so in mohenjo daro the largest building is said to be a granary so this granary it was 45.71 meters long and 15.23 meters wide but in citadel of harappa we find six granaries and in harappa the size of each granary is where measured as 15.23 meters into 6.09 meters 
This 15.23 meter, it is length of the granary and 6.09 is breadth of the granary. And this granaries, it laid within a few meters of the river bed. So the combined four space of this 12 units it would be approximately 83 lakhs 81,025 square meters. So this would be the approximate size of this six granaries. So the same size it was present in Mohenjo-daro also approximately the same size and it was a great granary and Mohenjo-daro had one granary and this Harappa had six granaries. The drainage system of Mohenjo-daro it was very impressive. So almost every house in the city whether it may be a smaller house or a bigger house it had this drain system and every house it had its own courtyard and a bathroom in kalibangan many houses had their own wells also so the water flowed from the house to the streets so on the streets it had drains and this drains it were it was said to be covered with a bricks or even a stone slab so either it was covered by bricks or with a stone slab the street drains it was even equipped with a manholes So this drainage system it was even found in Banavali which is said to be the sixth city of Harappa. So overall the drainage system and the quality of domestic bathrooms and the drains they are remarkable and the drainage system of Harappa it is almost unique in nature. We can say that no other civilization than Harappa it gave more attention to health and cleanliness as the Harappans did. Agriculture. So the city of Harappa. It was set comparatively it was rainless compared to pre Harappans. The Indus region it was not very fertile. the villages and towns they show that this place that was this Harappan culture it was more fertile in the ancient times but at present it has only a rainfall of about 15 centimeter and around 4th century BC one of the historians of Alexander he informed that the Sindh was a very fertile part of the country and at that time this river Indus it possessed a natural vegetation and it attracted more rainfall it supplied fuel for baking bricks on a large scale and also for construction so as the time passed natural vegetation was destroyed by the extension of agriculture so for agriculture we need space right so for that purpose natural vegetation was destroyed and it was made as a agricultural land large scale grazing was done and the supply of fuel was also done in the form of wood and one of the important reason for the fertility of that area was that it was a annual river 
river indus it is it was an annual river which flows whole year so that the people used those water for agriculture so the walls were made out of burnt bricks and it was this walls it was raised for protection which means we can say that there was a floods that took place every year so to protect themselves from the floods a large walls were raised near the river beds so this indus river it carried more alluvial soil and it deposited on the flood plains so just as we can say that a river nile created egypt and it supported its people indus created sindh and it supported the people in the sindh so the indus people they sowed the seeds in the flood plains during the month of november and when the floods water reduced they reaped their harvest of wheat and barley but archaeologists didn't find uh, any kind of uh, hoe or a plow share in the civilization but a uh, furrows were discovered in the pre harappan phase at kalibagan and this shows that the fields were plowed in rajasthan in harappan period and in harappan period this people they used a wooden plow share that means pre harappans i initially said that there are two phases in harappan civilization that is pre harappan and harappan a pre harappan there was a no evidence of agriculture and that's why no plow share whereas in the harappan culture agriculture was done and there were evidence of wooden plow share so we don't know exactly whether this plow was drawn by women or men or oxen stone sickles it was used to harvest the crops and gabbar bands or nalas so this were enclosed by the dams for the purpose of storing water in the dam and it was and it is a part of baluchistan and afghanistan the harappan villages were mostly situated near the flood plains and near the flood plains they produced sufficient food grains this food grains they fed to themselves and they also fed to the people in the town and it is said that this people must have worked very hard to meet their own requirements as well as artisans merchants and others who lived in the city and they were not directly concerned with food producing activities so this indus people they produced wheat barley peas and so on and they produced two types of wheat and barley a good quantity of barley it was discovered at banwali in addition to this they produced a sesamum and mustard so this indus people they were the earliest people to produce cotton because cotton was first produced in this area and the greeks called it as sindon which is derived from the word sind domestication of animals this harappans practiced agriculture they domesticated animals and this animals they were kept on a large scale like oxen buffaloes goats sheep and pigs the humped bulls were favored by the harappans and from the beginning dogs were the pets to this harappan people and they even domesticated cats and this people they also kept asses and camels and this too it were used as a beast beast of burden that means they were used to carry the loads elephants were well known to the harappans and 
this people were acquainted with rhinoceros also the contemporary sumerian cities in the mesopotamia they practically produced the same food grains and they domesticated the same animals as the harappan state but the harappan people in gujarat they produced rice and they domesticated elephants and this was not the case with the people of mesopotamian cities technology and crafts so this harappan culture they belong to bronze age and the people of harappa they used many tools and implements of stone and this people manufactured and used bronze also so this bronze it was made by a smiths so this bronze it was made by mixing tin with copper the impurities of the ores like copper it was obtained from ketri copper mines which is in rajasthan so this it was also present in baluchistan so the bronze tool weapons were used and they were recovered from the harappan sites and even this bronze tool they had a very smaller percentage of tin content in it the kit of bronze coats it left the harappans in a considerable way and this suggests that the bronze smith constituted an important group of artisans in the harappan society so this people they produced images and utensils with various tools and weapons such as axes saws knives and spears a piece of woven cotton it was recovered from the site of mohenjodaro and a textile impression was found on several objects spindle wools were present for spinning and weavers wo the cloth of wool and cotton huge brick structures they suggest that the brick laying it was an important craft of this harappan people and they also attest the existence of a class of masons the harappans they also practiced boat making they were also involved in seal making and terracotta the goldsmith made jewelries of silver gold and the precious stones and the first two it may have obtained from afghanistan that is silver and gold there is a doubt that it could be obtained from afghanistan and this precious stones it was obtained from south india so this harappans they were an expert in bead making the potter's wheel it was in full use they used the wheel completely and they produced their own characteristic pottery and they made those pots a very glossy and they gave a very shining structure to those pots trade so the harappan cities they did not have a necessary raw materials so this people they did not use metallic money also so they completely had no knowledge about this currencies so this people they were following a barter system so that is for purchasing one good they used to exchange the goods which they have so they they used to give the rice and they used to take a finished goods from the other person and this is called barter system so this people they practiced navigation on the coast of arabian sea this people they came to know the use of wheel and they constructed carts with a solid wheels and this wheels it was in use in harappa this people started traveling through bullock carts the harappans they had a commercial links with rajasthan afghanistan and iran and their cities also carried on 
commerce. Many Harappan seals have been discovered in Mesopotamia and it seems that the Harappans imitated some cosmetics which were used by the Arab urban people in Mesopotamia. So the Mesopotamia text it speak of two intermediate trading stations and those stations are Dilman and Makkan. So this lay between Mesopotamia and Meluha. What is this Meluha? Meluha it is an other name for Indus Valley civilization. This Meluha was a name it was called by this Mesopotamian people instead of Harappan civilization or Indus Valley civilization. Political organization in Harappa. So there is no clear idea about the political organization of Harappa but there were no temples in this place. There were no religious structures and there was only a great bath. So therefore it is a wrong perception to think that the priest rule in Harappa. So since there were no temples and no religious structures, the priest did not rule Harappa. And there are some practices seen like fire cult with in Lothal in Gujarat, but still no temples were found. And the archaeologists say that this Harappan rulers they were more concerned with commerce than conquering the other cities. The Harappa was possibly ruled by a class of merchants. Religious practices in Harappa. So in Harappa, terracotta figures were found and this terracotta figures were of women and in one figure a plant is shown growing on the embroil of a woman that is on the head part of the woman. So this image it represents the goddesses of earth and it was ultimately connected with the origin and growth of plants. The Harappans looked upon the earth as a fertility goddesses and they worshipped her in the same manner like the Egyptians worshipped Nile goddess. So in the Egyptian civilization the daughters inherited the throne or they inherited the property we can say but we don't know about the nature of inheritance in Harappan society. So some Vedic text they show a reverence to earth goddess and she is not given any prominence and it took a very long time for the worship of the supreme goddess to develop in Hinduism and only from 6th century AD various mother goddesses like Durga, Amba, Kali and so on they were worshipped and they came to be regarded as goddesses in the Puranas and in the Tantra literature. A male deity it is represented on a seal and this god has three heads and has horns also and he is represented in a sitting posture of a yogi placing one foot on the other and this god is surrounded by an elephant, tiger, rhinoceros and has a buffalo below his throne. So you can see this picture of a male deity. So at his feet they appear two deers. The seal immediately recalls to our mind the traditional image of Pashupati Mahadeva. The four animals surrounding the god look towards the four directions of the earth. The Rig Veda speaks of non-Aryan people who were a phallus worshippers. The phallus worship which started in the days of Harappa, it came to be recognized as a respectable form of worship in Hindu society. Animals and trees were also worshipped from the Indus region and the picture of a god is represented on a seal 
in the midst of branches of a people tree and this tree continues to be worshipped till today. The most important animal it worship was a humped bull and even today such bull passes in the market streets or somewhere on the roads the Indians give way to it and similarly the animals that surrounds a Pashupati Mahadeva they indicate that this way worshipped. The Indus region worshipped gods in the forms of trees, animals and human beings. But the gods were not placed in temples, a practice which was common in Egypt that is in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. The use of amulets were found in large number and this Harappans they believed that ghosts and evil forces were capable of harming them and therefore they used this amulets against them. The Atharva Veda which is concerned to be a non-Aryan work, it contains many charms and spells and it recommended amulets for warding of disease and evil forces. The Harappan script, this Harappans they invented the art of writing like the people of ancient Mesopotamia and the earliest Harappan script it was noticed in 1853 and the complete script it was discovered in 1923 and some people they tried to connect this script with the Dravidian or the Proto-Dravidian language and some people they connect this script with Sanskrit language and some with Sumerian language. These Harappans they did not write a long inscriptions and most of the inscriptions they were recorded on seals and they contain only few words and this seals they have used by a appropriated people to mark and identify their private property and altogether we have nearly 250 to 400 pictographs and each picture and each letter stands for some sound or a, of an idea or an object. So this Harappan script it was not alphabetical but it was pictographic. Weights and measures. So the knowledge of the script it have helped people in recording of their properties and it maintained an account. The urban people of Indus region they needed the use of weights and measures for trade and for other transaction purposes. Numerous articles it was used for weights and they showed that weighing mostly 16 or the weighing it was in the multiples of 16 like 64, 160. 320, 640 and so on. The weights were measured in the multiples of 16 and this multiples it continued in India till the modern times and it was used as annas like 16 annas that made 1 rupee. The Harappans they knew the art of measurement. So we have come across sticks that inscribed with measure marks and one of this is made of bronze. Harappan pottery. So the Harappans were great experts in the use of potter's wheel. So we come across a numerous pots that is painted with various colors and this Harappan pots were generally decorated with the designs of trees and circles. So the image of men is also found on some potteries. Seals. So the greatest artistic creation of the Harappans were the seals and about 2000 seals was found and this are the great majority that carries a short inscriptions with pictures of one horned bull, buffalo, tiger, rhinoceros, goat, 
and elephant images the harappan artisans they made a beautiful image of metals a woman dancer made of bronze it is the best specimen except for a necklace she is naked and we get a few pieces of harappan stone sculptures that is one steatite statue it weighs on ornaments that is ornamented rope over the left shoulder and under the right arm and the other short locks at the back of the head they are kept tidy by a woven fillet and the terracotta figurines so we get many figurines that is fire baked earthen clay which is commonly known as terracotta so this was either used as a toy or a object of worship and they represent birds dogs sheep cattle and even monkeys men and women they also find a place so the seals on the images it was manufactured with a great skill but the terracotta pieces they represent a unsophisticated artistic work so the contrast between the two sets it indicates a gap between the classes which used them harappan culture it is very poor in artistic works that is made out of stone so the harappan culture it existed between 2500 bc and 1750 bc and its mature phase it lay between 2200 bc and a 2000 bc but throughout the period of its existence it seems to have retained the same kinds of tools weapons and houses the whole style of life it appears to be uniform so we can notice the same town planning same seals same terracotta works and the same long chert blades so around 1750 bc the two important sites of harappan culture one is harappa and the other is mohenjodaro they were disappeared but the harappan culture at the other sites it also faded gradually and it is difficult to explain the origin of harappan culture as its end harappan culture it is not clear though this culture it may have evolved out to be indigenous settlements so the contact with mesopotamian cities they may have provided some stimulus for the development of harappan cultures and there are certain elements that distinguish it from the contemporary culture in western asia so this harappan culture it had planned its town with their chessboard system streets drainage pipes and cesspits so rectangular houses were there with a brick lined bathrooms and wells together such town planning it is not to be found in the cities of western asia it is not found in western asia also such kind of well planned towns and drainage system and everything was present in this harappan civilization and no other people in antiquity they had built such an excellent drainage system so this is all about indus valley civilization see you all in the next session with some other interesting topic thank you